zero or something from, on sugar. From, from public. But folks, just feel free. Just we're just gonna have a conversation with Mick, so just feel free to ask him questions. Mickey, uh, what are your impressions, first of all, of the early enrollees, uh, specifically the wide receivers? Um, well, first off, you're talking about the largest mid-year group that I've ever been involved with. So it's a lot of years and a lot of guys. So number one, from a from a size standpoint, it's it's pretty impressive. Um, from a togetherness, like like serious standpoint. Like these guys are ready. Like they, they came mentally ready for what's coming. They came focused. They're into it. They're. It's a really good group. We just had a meeting, and everybody in our department talked about how well the freshmen were doing. Just you know, taking care of their business. Uh, the wideouts. I mean, obviously, you have those four guys. They're all different. You've got the little. You got Mookie, who's 195 pound boat up guy. That's kind of a quick guy. Then you got G, who's kind of like Austin Mackish. Then you got Julian, and uh, and then you got Jackson. So they're all different. They've been great. Um, I love their work ethic. I love their focus so far. We've separated them just because it's such a big group. So we'll separate them all the way until the end of January, and then we'll start integrating them with the other guys. You mean separate as the wide receivers group? No, separate them as the mid-year freshman group. Oh, I see. Because they're on a different plan. Like their fitness levels aren't with what the other guys are. Can, um, in terms of those receivers. Obviously, you haven't seen them on the field yet. Mm -hmm. but can you get a, a sense of just, I mean, they're the most talented group in God knows how long, of just what they could become? Um, I think they could be as good as they want to be. Um, but the receivers that have been here in the past have put in an important amount of work in to get to where they were. If you look at Terry McLaren, just if they do that and they follow, they follow the culture that has been built in that room, you know, hopefully. They haven't put pads on yet, at least at, at here. So we'll see what just focus so far and all that. You hope. I mean, they have to be. Nick, how much uh, conversation is there? I mean, these guys work out. You have the whole team about that game, the way the season ended. Is that a big? You guys use that as motivation? How much? Is no that doubt. Happen? There's a sign in the way. What's it say? Whatever the score was. Okay. In your experience, when you've had these kinds of tough losses or you know, things that you want to use as catchphrases, how effective can those be? How they many could be as effective as you want them to be based on what kind of team you have. So the good thing is the quarterback's back and he's like he's completely different than he was 365 days ago because of what he did and falling short. So was there any thought for you about uh, the wound is so fresh, maybe let's not talk about it right away. Or do you prefer to throw it right out? Throw it right out. <clears throat> how it's is, real. <laughs> how, how is the quarterback different? I mean, explain what you, what you mean. From a well, I think point. like last year when he showed up, uh, he was quiet. He was trying to fit in. He was trying to find the nutrition room. He was trying to find his classes. He wasn't sure about the workout. He didn't know who his buddies were. It's cold. Everything. I mean, he didn't know anybody. Now all of a sudden, he's the starting quarterback. Um, he's earned a reputation of being a hard worker. Uh, he knows he's the leader now. Uh, he knows what needs to be done. He has a whole different mindset of his off of the offense and where that needs to go. Um, he knows that he has to do a great job with those young receivers. Um, so to me, it's like completely different. Is is uh, is he restricted right now? From uh, you know none zero. Yeah. Uh, are you surprised to see that, or I mean, are, are, did y'all expect that? Um, I expect it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other thing, Mick, what, what, do you, do you, during this time, do you have specific position group stuff that y'all do from a, you know, quarterback's arms getting stronger, things like that? I mean, and how does it specifically uh, pertain to the quarterbacks? What, what's um, some, some generally, what do y'all do? I think right now is kind of a, a general time, just general fitness, get, getting them back into, you know, strength training and yeah. running and flexibility and mobility. But what we do is we break down two ways. So what I do is I look at the team that just left or the, the team prior. And then you look at what you have coming back and then you look at you look at the team building. Um, like how what, what we need to do for the team. Like last year was completely different. 2016 was different, 14 was different. So they're all different from a team standpoint. And then you break down each individual of what their needs are. So um, 
somebody needs to get stronger, somebody needs to get in better shape, someone needs to gain weight, someone needs to be a better leader, someone needs to be uh, disciplined better, someone needs to uh, eat better. And they all have those individual goals. And what we did this year was a little different is we gave them like a six question um, self-evaluation project where they had a list. Number one was what motivates them. Not what, what, not what we want them to be motivated by, but what motivates them. So for example, uh, let's use Jeremy Rucker. Jeremy Rucker, what motivates me? What, what is the question? He lists whatever that is. The next one was give me three goals of the offseason for you that you have. Your goals could be get a better GPA. It could be be a better teammate. It could be going to bed earlier, whatever it is. And then a couple other questions pertaining to like what, what your unit can expect from you, what your teammates can expect from you. Um, and then what we did was we put them in the locker room, on the lockers, so everybody can see everybody's goals. Yeah. So if someone needs help, then the leader grabs him and says, you're not, you're not, this isn't your goal, you're not doing it. So it's kind of cool, or they need help, yeah. whatever it is. So we're trying to be very transparent, more than we've ever been. We're trying to like help each other. If somebody does something right or wrong, we're calling it out, we're teaching them. I mean, it's, I'm just trying to make it as focused and as focused as they can be. Nick, you mentioned the mental preparedness of the, of the early enrollees. Have you seen a difference in their physical preparedness coming in as opposed to previous years? It varies. It varies. You got guys like uh, you got guys like Paris Johnson who, you know, he's been training at a level since he was in eighth grade right. differently than, you know, one of the other linemen. It's just all different. I try to figure that out years ago. You can't. Like it how just, do you, how do you I'll tell you what, when kids that come from the state of Texas, they they've got a pretty good development. Here's what I see, the state of Ohio, state of Texas, there's actually strength programs that they, does that make sense? Yeah. I was gonna ask you about Jackson because he came in with a little, a little limp after yeah. he hurt himself. Have you had to restrict him at all? Oh, good. Mick, uh, yep. when you have players who, you guys recruit them, maybe they're a linebacker, but there's some thought that perhaps down the line he could get bigger and become a defensive end, something like that. How does your staff factor into that? How much back and forth is there about how guys are changing and ultimately like the decisions when a guy does make a position switch, like how much are you involved in that? Uh, involved very heavily. Um, I think what we do is just naturally see what happens because you can't stop like, you can't stop nature and it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Just guys gaining weight just because their bodies are maturing and they're getting, you know, just getting bigger because if there's a guy like you know, if you have, put, let, uh, Javante Jean Baptiste is a perfect example. When he was recruited on his recruiting trip, he weighed 195 pounds when he stood on a scale. Like, I don't know about you, but you can't play a defensive end in the Big Ten at 195 pounds. He was a guy that reminded me when I was at Cincinnati, those are the kind of guys, you just development guys, right? Well, Javante, uh, Javante right now weighs 248 pounds. So over a period of two years, we knew that his frame would be able to put that weight on. Um, and when there's a position change, like a DB going to linebacker, linebacker going, that just happens kind of naturally, naturally, and you just see what you know where your needs are and if they can do it or not. Are you and the coaches usually on the same page with that, or are there times where you'll look at a guy and you'll see maybe you because you have a better eye for it that, that that's what that that's what's going to happen with that guy? Yeah, they they lean on me a lot just from the experience because I always had a player like that. He reminds me of this guy. That, he reminds me of this guy. Um, but sometimes they'll be like, well, we want to keep them outside. We want to keep them a guard. We want to keep them here. And then we work together and just make sure that the plan is on point of where, where we want them. How did it go with a guy like uh, Cade Stover, for instance? When I think he was recruited. Most of them thought he was a linebacker. Now it sounds like he's going to play defensive end. Like, was that, in your mind, the plan all along? Or well, I mean, he's time? six foot four or whatever. He's 225 <clears throat> pounds. When he gets here, you know, you could just see his bones and his, like he's probably going to get big. But you never, you never say they can't until you just let the season play out and you know just let see what happens. I'm curious, uh, Coach, uh, yeah. from a month by month standpoint all the way to August 1st, what are the things that you guys are focusing on? As you mentioned a minute ago, what you're working on now. Obviously, you have a month in there where you have spring practice. Mm -hmm. Just what what are the things that you guys focus on in a month by month? So that's a great question. So like <clears throat> right now in January, we've got. It's, it's general training. 
but we got them in three groups. We have the developmental group, which would be like freshmen and sophomore guys that don't have a whole lot of reps that they played on a field. You have your advanced group, so your Josh Myers, Wyatt Davis, uh, Jonathan Cooper, guys that have played a lot of ball here, so their bodies are, they've taken a lot of hits, so we gotta train them at a different pace. And then you got your new guys, which are your 15 mid-years, um, so they all have different needs, especially the first three weeks, and then we start integrating them. The month of February is kind of the month that, like, we hold our hat on around here. Like, that's when we, it's dark and it's early and it's hard and it's adverse and it's uh, everything that you want out of it. Month of uh, March, you got spring ball, but it's, it's per, I call it perpetual development. From the time they walk in that door for the, from the first day to the time they leave and go to play in a senior bowl, it's perpetual development. You're trying to get better every day you're in here, every month, every, you know, every year as you go through. Thank <laughs> you.